What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to T3G. My name is Dalibor, and this is the Tangents Podcast. Uh, this is episode 90 of the Tangents Podcast. If you are new, this is where we uh, talk about a bunch of different things. That's really kind of the the, the starting point. Uh, we pick a few topics, usually one to three topics, and uh, just see where it goes. Uh, I do not have a guest with me today. I am just soloing this one because I want to talk about this film you're seeing on screen here, Wonder Woman 1984. This uh, this film uh, is by far the greatest disappointment of 2020. Um, yeah, above even everything going on in the world. Yeah, because you could argue that a lot of those things weren't disappointments. They were expected, right? You, you expected uh, Donald Trump to not do his job right. And yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm going to say the biggest disappointment in 2020. Yeah. Um, it's obviously not the worst thing of 2020, but it's absolutely the biggest disappointment of 2020. Um, certainly in media. Certainly in media. Um, man, so many issues with these films. Um, these films. This film. <laughs> I've got three trailers about to play, so I really. I, I, w- I wish there was a way to set it to like loop. I want to. I want to cover a few things right you've got a few major factors that play into my opinion here my decision about what to rate this and i'll give you right now that's a rating of 5.5 out of 10 uh and i was struck because i was struggling i was struggling real real hard to get it a six and uh if you guys recall i gave um suicide squad 6.5 because it was good it was entertaining and uh you know, it, it was just kind of boring and, you know, it wasn't a great story. And this is where this movie loses me right out the gate. It's a terrible story. The plot is horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Uh, the plot is very much um, a wishing stone. And of course, if you guys don't know, we, we only do spoiler reviews here. We, we don't really do spoiler free reviews. So going forward, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, that's a you decision. <laughs> uh three major factors three major factors that really just destroy this story uh the maxwell lord plot line had a really solid potential but it did not pay off uh the cheetah story arc is terrible just horrible there is no question about that there is no way to look at that without looking at it as a terrible character arc uh, she's supposed to be a better character than this that's the problem. That's the problem I'm really having here is Cheetah is supposed to be a better character than this. And in this movie, it's like she's this nerdy little, you know, like super, super tropey, cliche, nerd, best friend thing. And, and, and even more so nerd, nerd who turns into a villain thing like this arc for Cheetah is the same arc from to uh, the Riddler. In fucking 90, what is it, 97, 95. It's the same arc as the Amazing Spider-Man 2's Electro. It's the exact same arc. Quirky, nerdy, and like to the degree of you know they're going to go bad. You just know because that's how they're being portrayed. At this point, it has become such a tropey, cliche thing that you knew exactly where that was going to go. Even if you didn't know she was going to be a villain, which by the way, they need to do a better job like... They need to do a better job. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They need to do a better job burying the lead. You know, like don't, don't, don't give me the villain right out the gate, right? Don't. I know that they, they waited like two trailers to show that, to just show her in her cheetah form, but at the same time, that was terrible. That's one of the other facts we'll we'll talk about in a second here. Um, here's the thing: I really wanted this to be good i didn't want it to be great i didn't need it to be the best movie of the year i didn't i didn't need it to be the best best movie of anything i just needed to be as good as the first one that's it that's all that was the bar the bar was i just needed to do the job the first one did competently and and visually appealing and all these things and what what it did instead was just throw everything that was good about the first one out the door and yeah, that was it. That's it. It didn't really do anything else. It just threw everything that was good about the first one out the door. And then it focuses on men are bad. By the way, that's a really big thing here. Men are bad. And yet Wonder Woman is allowed to get away 
with sexual assault. How so? Well, uh, she has sex with Steve Trevor, who is possessing someone's body. A person who you see for about two seconds until she sees that it's Steve, and then we all just collectively see that it's Steve, and then one other time you see him when he looks himself in the mirror. Other than that, we just forget about this person, this human being who has a life, possibly a family, even if he's a bachelor. He's supposed to be some sort of engineer, but even if he's a bachelor, he has friends, right? That he has a, he's a job. But no, we just forget about this person's life, this human being's life, because, well, he's a plot device and we, we need Steve Trevor to be back. And it's not like uh, Movie Bob brought this point out entirely perfectly well. I wasn't even thinking about this before, but it's like, it's not like the stone can't uh, like m- manifest things out of nothing. That fucking wall came out of nowhere. All those nukes came out of nowhere. No, this was, this, this might have been something. Uh, somebody else brought this up that it, it uh, I think it was Movie Bob now that I think about it. Um, this might have been um, a, a something that they wanted to do more with, um, but then they didn't. Uh, that might have, you know, that person that, that he took the body over might have ended up being somebody else in DC Universe. But because there's no direction in the DC EU, um, it, it was just thrown out. Because uh, from what I understand, from, from the information that's out there, this movie was kind of recut two or three times. Some shit was done. Things were changed. Things were taken out. I don't, I don't like it. I didn't like it. The The stuff that was fun, the, the like, hey, this is how she gets her invisible plane. That's cool. Except you you give me like half a reason, right? You, you were like, all right, so my father did something to make the mascara invisible, and I'm going to do the same thing. What is that thing he did? We will never know because you will never tell us. Dumb. Dumb. Um, the wishing stone concept is garbage. The wishing, the, the like monkey's paw. Like, it's stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. 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 Like it's played out. It's old. And it wasn't even done that well. It wasn't even done that well. With the possession of, of another human being, you could have easily just had a situation where the thing she has to give up is Steve, and the thing that was sacrificed for him to get, or rather, to, to get Steve back, the thing that is lost, is this human being's life. And you could have had true, genuine morality questions, but no, we wanted to have a campy, fun, colorful, That was that's the thing everyone fucking keeps bringing up. It's so colorful. Sure, until you get to the final boss fight, and then it's just gray. It's a whole lot, a lot of shades of fucking gray. Even the golden armor is fucking gray in most of it. Like, it's stupid. It is really, really, really stupid. Um, I'm, I'm honestly, like, I'm becoming even more angry with it the more I think about it. Because of the potential. The potential was there. Like I said, with the possession of, of that human being, um, you could have had a morality play of... They really want to be together. They want to have physical, you know, interactions. But, like, this is someone's body. Like, there's a a matter of consent. But, no, we just, like I said, we see him at the beginning. We make fun of him for his his mess and for his shitty wardrobe. And then we just don't think about him again until the end where it's like, oh, yeah, remember that guy who was possessed? Like, it's, it's completely, it's incoherent in its plot lines. Cheetah gets her powers and then she disappears for a while and then she shows up at the, the 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 White House and then she disappears again for a while and then she's a cheetah. Like it, it it's there there's no arc. Cheetah even as a villain is used as a plot device just to have like she is she's the uh she's she's the she, I, was, I was just playing uh, Dark Siders. So she's Straga before you get to Abaddon, right? She, she's, uh, she, she's, uh, I don't even know. I don't. I'm trying to get like a classic example, uh, but uh, whatever. I, I don't know. Scorpion before you get to. I feel like Scorpion's really early on in the tower. Regardless, whoever it is before Goro, right? It, it's it's the the second to last guy. So it's like 
you have this potential of cheetah and by the way the cheetah cg garbage or costuming i, I don't think it was costuming i think it was entirely cg and it was garbage because she just looked like a human being with she looked like a fucking furry like not even a good one like they couldn't give her the the like the cat lips, the nose, nothing. They didn't give her anything. They gave her fur, some eyes, and claws and teeth. Cool. That's so good and so no, it's garbage. It's fucking garbage. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm super super unhappy about that. Um, yeah, the like focus on men are bad. Uh, for for the first like half the movie, it's like don't forget men are bad. Men don't help her pick up her stuff, and then men cat call, and then there's that random guy who, again, we have no setup for. There is no, like, hey, I've been watching you. Like, he just shows up, and he's a creep. So men are creeps. Remember that? That's that's the, that's the, that's the primary, um, that is the absolute primary purpose of the first half of the film, to tell you that men are creeps. Um yeah, I, I'm I'm mad about it. I'm really, really, I'm big mad about it. I'm big mad about it. Man, I really wanted, and like, let's let's talk about like the big, big elephant in the room, right? So the fact that the thing, the one thing she wishes for after 80 fucking years is for Steve Trevor to come back. You're telling me, you're telling me, she works at the Smithsonian, people who are very interested in history. She's got, she's of a cultural background, like of an interesting cultural background. She in 80 years has not met a single person to have a friendship with, to have any sort of meaningful connection with. 80 years. That must have been some grade A dick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because then you're telling me that Wonder Woman, Princess Diana of Themyscira, is just a lovesick teenage girl. That's all she is. It's not like she learned her whole life to be independent and fight and, and, and be strong. No. She got some dick, and it was so good. She got stuck on that shit for 80 years. Nah, man. Nah, I, it... it the fact that that was the one thing, and c could could you say that that was like her one true love? Absolutely. But then don't make her to be this one note character, right? You could say, all right, that was her one true love. Like her heart is just, she gave her heart to him. Maybe she's dating a guy. Maybe she's like just has friends. I mean, I I think it would have been more interesting if she was dating someone. Uh, fuck, maybe. And I don't know about married. I feel like maybe she'd understand, like, I live a long time. I'm not going to marry some dude. But anyway, she's dating some guy, maybe seriously for quite a while, a couple years. And then Steve comes back because in her heart of hearts, that's her That's her true wish. Now, now it's a complicated, now you got a little love triangle thing going on. Super, super, like, that could have been interesting. But no, no. We are just going to make Steve Trevor a plot device. Uh, for her, for him to, she works at the Smithsonian. They have airplanes, and yet she has never understood how flight works. Um, yeah, in in how many years she has not just grasped the concept of flight? Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about all that. <sighs> Man, it, 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 this movie is frustrating. This was cool. I was like, when I saw the trailer, I was like, this woman is Spider Manning off a of lightning. That's gangster. But then it just, it kind of lost steam. By the time we got to that, I was like, meh. By the way, she learned how to fly. What she could have done is uh, we could have just said this is the war armor of the Amazons that was lost. Not, oh, it was like this whole, oh, it belonged to our greatest warrior. Well, then what the fuck? Is, so it's just the armor. It's just armor. At that point, it is just armor. It belonged to our greatest warrior. Okay. Does that imbue it with some sort of ability or are you just going to wear it for merchandising and then do nothing the fuck with it? It didn't give her her powers back. It did not give her the ability to fly, even though it had wings. But now she just learned how to fly. But then was like, let me go get this armor, which is going to make me heavier because it's armor. Uh, and, and and I already know how to fly, but it's got wings. So maybe uh, maybe I fly faster something. I, I don't know because there was no explanation. There was no explanation why she put that on. The best part of the movie, the best part of the movie was the fucking Linda Carter cameo. 
It was the absolute best part of the movie. It, it, it played a little to like an earlier scene. Like that felt like the most like contiguous thing of the whole film. Hey, remember this thing that we did? Like the good callback? This is the thing. I I, I became, uh, I fell in love with the Hamilton musical this past year. Uh, when it came out, when it was released, I, I've watched it probably 10 times. I've heard it countless countless times i've heard this uh, the, the 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 music of hamilton and the one thing right out the gate after the first watching my my biggest rec- recognition point was this movie or this this movie this musical did a really good job the way the story was told it did a really good job calling back to earlier things the way the stuff was orchestrated the way the, the the moments in the music were orchestrated it called back to earlier moments like i actually don't think my shot is that good of a song but every time it's called back it gains more power because he says hey come uh he like i'm just you just know who i'm talking about uh <laughs> uh, uh 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 Washington, I completely forgot the game. <laughs> George Washington says, "Hey, come work for me. I know it's not leading a troop or, or, or a, a squadron. Uh, I, I think neither of those terms is correct. Whatever. Uh, it's I know it's not leading fighting. I know it's not fighting in the war, but I need you to like help me organize this war." And he's like, "I'm not throwing away my shot." And that then makes that first song better. And then the second time where he says. Or he goes to work for him for the government, says the same thing, calls back the same way. It reinforces that original moment, right? It reinforces that original song. So that's what that moment did. This post credit scene where Linda Carter shows up and she's like, "Oh, it's uh, it, what is it? It's it's a matter of like uh controlling the the weight or something like that." Uh, I can you know it's pretty easy when you get to when you learn it, which just goes back to like when uh, Diana saved uh, Cheetah. And she's like Minerva, and she's like, "Oh yeah, it's it's a little self defense thing. You just gotta use their own weight against them, kind of thing." And it's like redirecting, redirecting momentum or something like that. I forget what the term was, but it was like it reinforced that moment, and that was the greatness of it, right? It made that early moment cool and cooler because I actually thought that was a cool moment of kind of how she handled, and and again, they they really did a good job in certain things. How she saved the, also like, I just, all these people see her and then no one talks about it. Like it, it, It's the whole thing where it was, uh, the whole thing where it was, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, like, you, you have to find a way for her not to have been known all this time. Uh, unnecessary. Uh, turns out that was also not... Anyway, a lot of people blame uh, Zack Snyder for that, uh, but that was actually, uh, well, his his an- intro- introduction to her, I think, was excessive. Uh, but what this movie could have easily done, or this movie, A, did not have to take place in the 80s. Did not. Uh, it could have taken place six months before fucking uh, uh, Batman v Superman. It literally, hell, it could have taken place, yeah, six months. Because then you say, oh, this uh, this big thing happened with with Man of Steel, and then when she kind of finds out she's you know her shit is missing, she goes hunting for it, and then you just say, oh, where was she? Oh, well that 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 they could have ended on that. It could have ended on where's my shit, right? I'm back in my house or I'm back in my storage unit. Where's my shit? Where's my picture? And that leads into Batman v Superman. And this movie could have just been a bunch of god shit because she is a demigod. And it could have been like, oh, I was on this quest and it resulted in me time jumping 80 fucking years. Because then it makes sense why he's still that important. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm jaded. I Maybe I am jaded. I love my wife. I love my wife in, in ways I cannot describe. Like it. It's genuinely like it feels cheesy to think about it because I do. It just is what it is. Like songs get me like emotional about it. Like if you ever saw Fresh Prince, you know why why I said that. Um, it, it it very much 
does not make sense to me that if somehow I was to live 80 years and God forbid she died today, that in 80 years, I just wouldn't find a single human being to share a moment with. To the degree, not not I'm not saying I would forget my wife. But I'm pretty sure that in 80 years, if somebody was like one wish, it would not be to bring back my dead wife. And that's my wife. I've been with this woman 10 years. She met him for 20 minutes 80 years ago. Got some dick once. I'm just... It's it's very infuriating. It's you have the whole the whole subtle subtext of you can't cheat could have been done better because that wasn't about cheating because him coming back was not cheating. That was not. It, I mean, unless you want to say that it was cheating into personal growth. So instead of actually growing as a human being as a person. Uh, you're like, nah, I'm just going to bring back my dead boyfriend and not grow as a person. And in fact, commit a heinous, heinous offense during the period of him being back in someone else's body. That's what she cheated to. She cheated that like the, the early lesson from the, from the flashback sequence at the beginning to the, 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 her running and like that was supposed to be the the tie-in right which they did they did in the trailer her running at the beginning her running when she goes to fly that uh is not the arc the arc is the the, the thing at the beginning the flashback is not cheating you can't cheat your way to victory the story of this movie is not cheating your way to victory i mean it is for it is for uh, uh maxwell lord but he's not the one that learned that lesson <laughs> like Oh my God. It just, like I said, it has moments. It has the the plane thing. The plane thing was cool for like 10 seconds. And then I was like, well, wait, what was the thing she did? Did she just, what was the, she did some magic shit in her hand. What the fuck is that? Is it a spell? Is it an energy she can control? What? Just 10 more seconds of explanation. And I would not even be talking about it. I would be talking about how cool of a moment that was. Just, man. And oh, look. She throws off the fucking wings. What was the point of the armor? And the movie ends without a fight, which is fine. I'm actually not mad about there not being a final fight. Um, I think there need to be more kind of anticlimactic endings because a lot of the formulaic superhero stuff is very much that you can't, um, you can't end a film without some... Massive fight with, you know, minions and all these things. And thankfully, this did, you know, go away from that. But at the same time, it was just like, you set up this whole thing where people wished people to death. And, and, and you know, there, uh, 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 Ryan George in his uh, pitch meeting brought up a really, really good point of 7 billion people. And all of them were... Every single wish was like superficial and selfish. There weren't like blind people who wished to see. There weren't people who were not able to walk who wished to walk. People with missing limbs that wish their limbs back. You're going to tell me that all of those people also renounced their wish? It's a very... It, it should have been a cascade. The whole thing at the end, where especially where she broadcasts herself to the fucking world, and then we're still supposed to believe that somehow no one knows her. Uh, because in 1984, I feel like Clark Kent would have been around. In fact, Clark Kent would have been around. Clark Kent would have been a teenager. What did Clark Kent wish for? What did Clark Kent wish for? Or maybe even not even a teenager. He might have, he might have even been a little younger. What did Clark Kent wish for? Hell, what did the Kents wish for? Did they wish for him to be a normal human being? So that he wouldn't have to face the challenges? And then they had to give that up? Imagine that. Jonathan and Martha Kent had to give up their son's 
only chance at a normal life. Yeah. It's 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 a plot line that you cannot, you just cannot think about too long because it falls apart. It just fucking falls apart. There's there's nothing. The plot is bad. It's just bad. It's a bad story, and for the most part, badly told. Like Suicide Squad was a bad story, but it was adequately told it it was told in the way they wanted to tell it. it it did not have any like massive plot holes it was government baddie hold some shit over a bad person's head and then when that pr- bad person turns on them they got to clean up their mess that that's a it's a very straightforward clean plot again not a great movie i still do not think it was a top tier film even in the smattering of offerings in the dcu i just i just genuinely think between the two if you turn off all your shit if you turn off your bullshit detector if you turn off your common sense if you turn off everything except like the reptile portion of your brain then this movie i'm sure is great but you you put you put 10 seconds of logic into this it falls apart it falls entirely the fuck apart Kristen Wiig is not an ugly woman I'm sick of this trope of oh here is here is this nerdy person and by wearing glasses and not form fitting clothes thus is somehow undesirable and or somehow I don't know not attractive and then she oh ah, now I can see look at Throw these glasses away. Who needs glasses? Glasses make you look ugly. And now I'm hot. It, it doesn't make sense. It's a stupid fucking trope. I've been sick of it. And now I'm even more sick of it. Because this was a blockbuster film. I really wanted this to be better. I really did. It's disappointing. It's disappointing but at the same time, it is on par, right? You're going to tell me this isn't what you're going to get out of a DCEU film right now? I'll be honest with you. I still haven't still, for some reason. Don't know why. Still have not seen Aquaman. Maybe I'll make that my mission tonight. Maybe I'll watch Aquaman tonight and, and, and I can bring it up in a future episode. But I'll watch Aquaman tonight. Shazam was good. I think Shazam was really well told. Uh, I think, uh, I think Man of Steel was good. Um, I, I did not, I, I'm not a big fan of like real life Superman, like, you know, with the, oh, military and like Jonathan Kent did not have to die, but they just really wanted to play up the hide yourself. Otherwise people will fucking come for you. Um, I, I don't, I don't love I, I just don't love that approach. Um, I understand that it's a different universe. And I had a really, really big problem with uh, Batman v Superman um, until I realized that in, in the DCEU, in this storyline, Batman is just way more emotional than he is in the comics, than he is in anything. Um, just way more emotional. Um, he, he flat out... Couch. Pull it down. I don't even know where I was at. I think I was comparing it to to the DC. Oh, the DCEU films. Like, um, yeah, the, the Batman is way more emotional in this universe. Oh, that just is what it is. And there's certain things that I can accept, right? There's there are certain things that I can accept, but I just, I just bad storytelling, bad writing, and the di- like. The dialogue was fine. The I think the acting was generally fine. I think the the campiness of the villain um, that was kind of the point. But like the things that are good about this movie just don't really outweigh the bad things. They just don't. Um, man, 
So much wasted potential. So much wasted potential. So much wasted potential. That's really what it is. It is disappointing. It is not uh, is not as good as not as good as the original, and that's that's a damn shame. And it's one of those things that I'm not mad that I watched it. Like I I enjoyed the things I could enjoy about it. If I had paid the you know typical fifteen to twenty dollars to experience it in the movie, in the movie theater rather, I'd have been mad. I'd have been mad coming out of this. Yeah, I'd have legit been mad coming out of this. I wanted there to be more. I wanted there to be more. And I wanted there to be, I mean, man, I could have overlooked some of the silly shit. I could have overlooked the tropey, like, best friend turned villain thing or, or you know, admirer turned villain thing. I could have, I, I could not have ignored the sexual assault. That There's just no way around that. That you could have had the same basic plot elements, but make it more interesting, make it make it be a moral conundrum and make it be a, a, a issue of consent. Like you had this whole thing about men are creeps. And instead of making that whole concept more interesting and just making it be about consent, it's like men are creeps and that's why she gets mad because men don't help her. But then they also uh, cat call her. Of course, cat calling is not good. Don't don't fucking uh, don't harass people. That's fucking ignorant. And it, it, it's. I don't know. It, it, it could have been better. It could have been better. I would have ignored, would have completely ignored the, I'm going to use laser signals to touch everyone in the world. No, that's not how it works. Um, I could not have ignored the, the gray fucking fight scene. But if you had a better fucking story, if you had a better executed story, that wouldn't have been a great fight scene. That could have been a fight. That, that could have been the fight in, in, in Washington. Or at least it could have been in the daytime. But no. Gray. Gray. It's funny. There are a lot of people on TikTok and on the internet in general and social media that are like blaming uh, Zack Snyder for like the problems that exist in this universe. But it's like Shazam wasn't gray. Shazam wasn't gray. It wasn't gray. It wasn't drab. It, it did not have a gray fight sequence. This fight sequence was at night, but then it ended up in a carnival with lots of color, lots of light. And f- fuck all of the, 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 the I'm going to call it the Marvel family because that's what it is. But I guess now they're going to be called the Shazam family. Uh, the Shazam family, um, they all have different color suits. So like it all is all very colorful. But no. A gray cheetah, because if you tell me she was any other color than gray, you'd be fucking lying. A gray cheetah in a place made out of concrete entirely, apparently, and surrounded by the grayest rocks I've ever seen. <sighs> so much potential, so much wasted potential. Yeah. Yeah. Not, uh, I'm not even going to talk about the geopolitical stuff, the I'm not even touching that. That's that's beyond my understanding. I don't know enough about it to to touch on it. This whole sequence of of them being in Egypt and her particular who she is and all of that stuff, I don't know enough about to 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 make any sort of educated opinion on. Uh, but the movie itself was was not good. Five point five out of ten. Fight me on it. Fight me on it in the comments uh, on Twitter or on Instagram. Feel free. Fight me on it. I would love to hear you try to tell me why it wasn't a disappointment. You can't, you can tell me that you enjoyed it. You could, I'm not telling you, you cannot enjoy this film. I'm not saying people cannot enjoy this film. I'm not saying this movie can't be enjoyable, but, but if you put even an ounce of logic on it, 
it you lose it you lose the whole thing it falls apart if you try to look at it in any critical fashion so yeah you can enjoy it if you accept the bad writing if you accept the 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 campiness is part of the the era that's fine whatever uh, i'm not mad about that if you accept the sexual assault if you accept the bad characterization sure yeah you can enjoy it but i'll tell you right now i've watched some campy ass movies that have better characterization than a couple of these characters. Like a better character arc, a more well thought out character arc than this movie. And that's a fucking shame. That's all I got to say for this one. Uh, what are we at? I don't know, probably about 30 minutes. That's worth it. That's 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 good enough. I don't need to bore you to death. Got a special one coming next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. It's a panels on pages episode. And uh, that's going to be it. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you in the next one.